All right, guys, uh, I haven't been posting a lot of YouTube videos. This is the first one in a while. Um, I have been working on my shop pretty heavily though. Uh, so I figured this would be a good opportunity to kind of do a walkthrough, uh, showcase kind of how I've changed things, how I've reorganized it just to be a little bit uh, easier to hot swap tools in and out and that sort of thing. This is a, a single car garage so I, and I have a car that goes in here. So I do have to be mindful of the space um, and how to just be a good opportunity to kind of give you guys a walk through a little shop tour to show you how I set things up. Uh, I've got a lot of inspiration from uh, other YouTube channels and other things on the internet and that to kind of set up my own space. So I figured maybe I could help others out that way. Um, while we do that, I'm also probably gonna walk you through some of the uh, projects that I've been doing. I'll do a little show and tell kind of thing. Uh, and uh, I'm just gonna stop talking and we'll get right to it. Okay, so this is the general place where I work, where I do everything uh, for my projects. We've got my bench on the left side here, uh, and we've got some storage on the right side. So the storage was actually broken up and was on both sides of the bench before, but I've combined that just so that the access to the tools is a lot easier. So as you can see here, uh, we've got like the bench grinder and the belt sander up here. Um, this is set up in a way that I can take these out very quickly, move them to the bench here. Uh, you can see my bench has a lip on the edge of it and the lip allows me to use uh, the clamps, these yellow clamps here to actually just clamp on to the bases of these tools and other tools like them because we've got the uh, drill press back there which is just a small drill press um, but you can see it's not fastened to the bench. Uh, so that's just so I can move it quickly, move it to an area where it works easier for me, uh, clamp it down so that it's fastened in place, and then uh, be able to just do the job that I need to do. On this side, we've got a bunch of different materials. So I've just kind of repurposed the left side of the bench to be my material area where I've got metal and wood and other materials like that that I can make things out of. Uh, as you can see here, I have a little power station. Uh, that's set up actually on the outside of a box that if I pull this out, it's probably gonna get a little bit dark, but let me just pull that out and I'll show you. Knocking things over as I go here. Um, and there's lots of dust here, but that's all the metal dust. I was making some axes, I'll show you in a second. Um, but I've, I've mounted a circular saw blade to the bottom of this box. And I can just take some saw horses and set this box on top of it. And as you can see, I've got a ruler here, there's a ruler on the other side as well. Um, and back there, there's a mount as well for a jigsaw to go in um, so that I can have kind of a pseudo scroll saw and a table saw uh, out of those two much cheaper pieces of equipment. Um, I'm gonna try and push that back. Let's make sure, there we go. Um, I knocked my stuff over down there. There we go. Uh, yeah, so, I just got my miter saw down here, fire extinguisher for safety. Uh, there's a stool and a toolbox as well. We've got a vise here. We had the little vise attached to that uh, other box as well. That's just a clamp on one so it can come off easily. Um, leather working tools in here and just a, a piece of board for putting epoxy on and mixing epoxy and stuff like that. Um, other materials and other tools, like just my pencils and, and markers and stuff. I've got the anvil behind one of the projects that I had completed. Uh, if you play Apex Legends, you'll probably recognize this. This was inspired heavily by that. Uh, there's a character in it named Revenant, and I wanted to try and practice doing repose technique uh, with that. It's not the cleanest, but it looks kind of cool uh, whenever I'm just doing it as a test kind of thing. I actually used, uh, I have a Dremel engraver that I used to do some of these. So the kind of scroll work, the filigree type stuff. So I'll actually show you that tool because it's a little bit of a neat tool. So this one's just, just this little tool. It's got a very fine little bit on the end of it. Get that away from the screw and it'll focus. There we go. Yeah, so it, it uh, kind of just pulsates really. It doesn't really spin or anything like that, but it just allows me to get these kind of uh, very fine details 
uh, put into the metal in that here. So that worked out pretty well. I'm just gonna put that back quickly and we're gonna blur all out because I'm moving around too much. A um, Couple other projects I worked on. Uh, right here we've got, this is the first knife that I kind of practiced on. It's, it was meant to be a friction folder, but I put the, uh, the pivot point in the wrong spot. The ricasso of the knife uh, right here would be covered by the uh, handle. So I, I'm not gonna finish this one. I was just kind of using it as practice to see. Let's get that focus again. Come on, there we go. So uh, I was just using it as practice for the grinds to make sure that I could get some good grinds. I, I think I did a fairly good job. I wanted this to have more of like a, a mini kukri kind of look where it does more of a recurve, um, but I'm not that talented yet. <laughs> I'll, I'll see as I go uh, how I can kind of improve that kind of thing. Uh, another one here, so these are two that I did. So actually this one was steel. This one's a stainless steel of some sort, I believe. Um, I didn't really check that much. It was again, it's more for practice. These ones are made of aluminum because they're meant more to be show pieces. And again, camera, do your thing, come on. There we go. So this one was made for a friend. Uh, it's a replica Scottish Dirk. And I made uh, this one all out of aluminum. Again, I used the engraver. Hopefully you can't hear that motorcycle zip by in the background. Um, yeah, so I used the engraver uh, to make this kind of filigree kind of swirly pattern on it. Did it on this side too. Um, and the reason I chose aluminum on these, which aluminum is not great to grind because it really gums up the uh, grinding belts, but <clears throat> it was just good practice for the actual uh, shaping, basically shaping and grinding of it. If we come to here, uh, so this is another one that I made for another friend. This is uh, the Cloud Buster Sword from Final Fantasy. Um, I gave it this aged look and I did actually start with a very nice clean look, uh, but I goofed up. And so I decided to give it this little more aged look so it had like a battle worn kind of look. So, but again, this is a case of if there's a screw up, make the best of it. And I think this actually worked out in its favor because this turned out really, really well. It just looks generally cool. So the actual uh, wear pattern on it is just from using a power file. So if I show you that tool right now, I'm just gonna pull it out of here. So I use this power file and again, we'll focus. Come on camera. So I just use the, the kind of tip of this to kind of gouge up, try and get that out again, try and gouge up the surface area of this a little bit. So, and, and then I left a lot of those marks just because I wanted to have that, that aged look. And then whenever I actually used the buffing wheel on the uh, bench grinder, uh, I left some of the compound in those, uh, in those kind of grooves and crevices so that it gave that really worn steel look, which I can't really get from polished aluminum. Like polished aluminum is very, uh, bright uh, and I wanted this to look a little more dark. So what's nice is that the edge where the bevel is has that nice shimmery sheen, but the actual body of the, uh, of the blade itself has that kind of worn look on it. So let's put this back real quick. All right. Um, some of the things here, actually, let's go back here for a second. So a couple other projects I did were just these handmade signs. Um, a lot of these are just made again with some scrap wood that I had sitting around. Uh, this one's some sort of MDF that was actually a stand for something else, but then I turned it into a sign. Um, got this one. So these are all things that you could use for like a wedding and things like that. I, I was trying to make stuff like that. These are all for sale. This one here. Again, this one's MDF. I think this one's a pine or a spruce back. Um, and then a lot of these I just did. Uh, so this was the only one that was pre-painted, but these uh, other ones I had to use acrylic paint uh, to do kind of the backgrounds of them. And then it's actually, it's acrylic paint too for the, uh, for the markers. So I have a uh, paint markers, these Molotov or Molotov, I believe, Molotov paint markers. Uh, 
that you can just basically do do your lettering like you would normally uh, with any other kind of marker or, or writing utensil, let's say. Um, they turned out really well. Um, what I did was I then hit, hit it with a sheen of uh, Varathane and just gave it this nice uh, kind of glossy coat as the finish. Um, for other projects, well, let, let's look at the board here. We've got uh, some of these custom uh, anvil-like pieces that uh, you've seen before in some of my other videos. Uh, I've got the brick chisel that I use kind of for fluting on, on a lot of metal. Um, got some wood chisels back here, a body hammer, the clamps. We got hammers here that are just two ball peen hammers, some smaller files. I've got a lot more files and things like that in the uh, uh, toolbox that's under here. And you can see I've got some other equipment in that. Well, you can't because it's not focusing. Um, just too dark down there. I've got the vise, uh, other hammers, other hammers. Uh, snips and a coping saw uh, back there as well. I actually just got a jeweler saw as well recently. Um, I have it on the uh, storage area over here actually somewhere. Um, some more clamps, lots of spray paint material. We've got some dollies for doing metal forming and some duct tape. That's a standard in a shop. Um, another project that I completed recently, uh, this is probably the latest one uh, that is actually complete. I'm working on another axe right now as well, but let's get this to focus. Where can I go to focus this? There we go. Um, so this is like a breaker axe uh, that I wanted to make, have like kind of a tactical kind of shape to it. Um, it's done in a way that the blade can be removed and the handle can be replaced very easily. Um, the bolts in that are lightly epoxied in, um, but, and this is 01 tool steel and the handle is oak with a linseed oil finish. So, and there is actually, uh, mild steel liners, uh, as well, just to get the thickness proper. Um, yeah, so this was my first ever ax. I never made an ax before. I've never made one. Um, I did want to try and do this kind of false edge kind of look. Let's see. So the false edge turned out pretty well. My, my grinds are okay. I'm not, not super happy with them. You'll see this as a very convex, convex, uh, kind of profile to it. Um, and again, I, I don't have anything in my shop to actually harden this steel. I could send it out to be hardened, but with this whole virus shit going on, I can't send it out, obviously. <laughs> Um, so I'm also not really that worried about this. I, I don't plan on hitting this against anything. And, and with that kind of profile, um, I'm not going to do a whole lot of damage to the blade that can't be just rebuffed out or, or sanded out. Um, so I am working on a second one here. So this is another one. Again, if, uh, you're familiar with the Revenant mask in the background, uh, this is roughly, uh, roughly similar to the axe in uh, Apex Legends. Uh, this is Bloodhound's uh, axe called Raven's Bite, I believe is what it's called. So this is kind of the blank right now uh, that I'm starting with. Again, 01 tool steel. Uh, it probably won't be hardened again, but I'm not that worried about it because I'm going to give it more of a, a flat grind or a convex grind uh, on the blade end of it. Um, I have a lot of plans for this one. I might film some of it. I might not, um, but We'll see how it goes. Um, what else do I have here? So I've got, uh, for tool wise, I've got a couple things under here. I've got my angle grinder and the uh, power file that you saw there. Uh, I have a new uh, bandsaw right here. And I've got some of the cutters here. Sorry, it's a little bit dark down here. The light doesn't get down that far. Um, oh yeah, yeah, so these. Um, I'll just pull these out. It's easier to, easier to see. So this was the, the first gauntlet that I ever made. And I've only actually made three gauntlets, but this is the first one. And then I'm going to be doing a more in-depth video about this, but these, uh, these are the second set of gauntlets here that I did as well. So this one is done about a year after this one. And the, 
amount of improvement that I have on that I'm, I'm very happy with. So um, we'll get into that more in a full video because uh, I kind of want to talk about the differences in that. But overall, um, just got to step back here. We'll get another view like this. This is how I've been able to manage a smaller space, uh, just being able to have easy access to the tools, easy access to the bench area and materials. Um, overall, uh, keeping an area like this lit is actually tough as well. So I have like the two uh, work lights here and then I've got lights on the ceiling and then just from the garage light and that as well. So um, there's not a lot of light in here, but it's enough that whenever I'm working at the bench, uh, I can see what I'm doing. So, so that's all good. So anyway, uh, I think I'm going to call it a wrap for there. If you guys have any questions, just leave them in the comments. Uh, keep an eye out for new projects. Like I said, I'm going to do that other video for the gauntlets as well to go a little more in depth into that. So, uh, thanks for going on this kind of lengthy tour now, I guess. And we'll see you in the next one.